good morning so let us continue with uh, the tutorial number uh, 8 on entropy the sixth problem here 1 kg saturated vapor of r134a is contained in an insulated frictionless piston cylinder device at a pressure of 300 kilo pascals it is slowly and reversibly compressed to a pressure of 700 kilo pascals Okay, so first process is slowly and reversibly compressed. Now, during this process, basically it is insulated. Then one of the insulation is removed and it, it is gradually cooled at a constant pressure to 20 degrees centigrade. Okay, it is 20 degrees centigrade. Determine the work and heat interactions and entropy change. Okay, the property tables for R134A is also given. The first table is the saturation table and the second one is the superheated table at 700 kilo pascals. So, mass is 1 kg, initial pressure is 300 kilo pascals and uh, it is given that saturated vapor that means x1 equal to 1. So, that means you can go to tables because it is saturated state. So, you can go to saturation table and uh, corresponding to pressure of 300 kilo pascals, we can take the values of V1 as Vg at 300 kilo pascals which is equal to 0 0.06778 meter cube per kg. <coughs> Similarly, U1 will be Ug at 300 kilo pascals which is equal to 230.55 kilo joule per kg. Now, it is slowly and reversibly compressed and it is adiabatic. Okay, So, reversibly means, so reversible and adiabatic process is obviously an isentropic process. So, here delta S will be equal to S2 minus S1 will be equal to 0. So, we will also take the value of entropy at state 1 which is Sg at 300 kilo pascals. So, from the table it is 0 0.9312 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Now, state 2. <coughs> state 2 is S2 equal to S1, one of the property because reversibly and adiabatically compressed. So, that is basically isentropic process. So, S2 will be equal to S1, 0 0.9312 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and the pressure is given. It is compressed to a pressure of 700 kilo pascals. So, that is P2 equal to 700 kilo pascals. So, now the state 2, two properties for the state 2 is known. One is the pressure, another one is the entropy. Okay. So, now see here. <coughs> First, we will go to the saturation table for corresponding to 700 kilo pascals pressure here. You see the entropy value. Entropy value Sg is 0 0.9201, but the entropy value at the state 2 is equal to state 1 which is 9312, 0 0.9312. So, we can find that S2 is greater than Sg at 700 kilo pascals. You understand no? So, 700 kilo pascals Sg is 0.9201, S2 is 0 0.9312 is greater than that. So, the state 2 should be superheated. Okay? So, now go to the superheated tables for 700 kilo pascals. I find an entropy value of 0.9314. In fact, I have given the tables here where the 
value is closer to what we get in the uh, state 2 entropy. So, we can just take this, there is no, no, not much difference, it is only 0 0.0002. So, we can take this is the this is the closest entry in the superheated tables for 700 kilopascals. So, we can say it away fix V2 as 0 0.03 meter cube per kg and uh, U2 as 247.5 kilojoule per kg. Okay, so, all the properties for state 1 to 2, 1 and 2 are fixed. Then R134A is cooled at constant pressure that is 700 kilo pascals to 20 degrees centigrade. Okay. So, what is state 3? It is fixed. State 3 is P3 equal to 700 kilo pascals and T3 equal to 20 degrees centigrade. Okay. Go back. You can see this 700 kilo pascals. The temperature in the second column is nothing but the saturation temperature for the given pressure. That means, the saturation temperature for a pressure of 700 kilo pascals is equal to 26.7 degrees centigrade. But for the state 3, the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. Okay. So, this means the state 3 is subcooled liquid. Okay. Since T3 is less than T sat at 700 kilo pascals that is 26.7 degrees centigrade. This state is yeah, subcooled liquid state, subcooled liquid. So, we know that for subcooled liquid state, we, we should use temperature based saturation tables at 20 degree centigrade. So, go back here. <coughs> here 20 degree table is there, saturation table. Here you can see that the value of V f and U f you have to take and obviously S f also you have to take. So, here V f for 20 degree is 0 0.816 into 10 power minus 3. So, V 3 equal to V f at 20 degree centigrade equal to 0 0.816 into 10 power minus 3 meter cube per kg. Then <coughs> U3 equal to UF at 20 degree centigrade which is equal to 78.85 kilo joule per kg. Similarly, S3 equal to SF at 20 degree centigrade which is equal to 0 0.3006 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, properties Required properties at all the three states are now taken. Okay, now for process 1 to 2, reversibly adiabatic process. So, Q1 to 2 equal to 0. First law Q1 to 2 minus W1 to 2 equal to U2 minus U1. So, this is 0. So, we can say W1 to 2 equal to U1 minus U2 equal to m into u1 minus a specific internal energy change. So, that will be equal to here 1 kg. So, mass is 1 kg and uh, u1 is 230.55, u2 here, u2 is 247.5. So, 1 into u1 is, is a 2 
thirty point five five minus two forty seven point five. So this will be equal to minus sixteen point nine five kilojoules. So that is the work interaction for problem one to two. Then for process two to three, where there is a constant pressure cooling, correct? So here Q two to three minus W two to three equal to U three minus U two. Of course, we are neglecting the changes in the potential and kinetic energy in both processes. So now this is the thing. So here, what is W two to three? It's a constant pressure cooling. That means seven hundred into m into seven hundred into v three minus v two. So that is one into seven hundred. Seven hundred is the pressure p two equal to p three. Okay. So that seven hundred into What is V three? V three is here, zero point eight one six into ten power minus three minus V two is point zero three, zero point zero three. So this will be equal to minus twenty point four three kilojoules. So that means Q two to three will be equal to minus twenty point four three plus m into U three minus U two. So Substituting the values, I get Q two to three as one eight nine point zero eight kilojoules. Now entropy change. Entropy change for the total state one to state three will do. So entropy change delta S equal to S sorry S m into S three minus S one which is equal to one into S three is zero point Three zero zero six minus S one is point nine three one two. Equal to minus zero point six three not six kilo joule per k Kelvin kg Kelvin. So this is Kelvin actually. Mm. So now you see this here. The first process is an isentropic process, and second process is a cooling process. So entropy decreases. So that is fine. So this is about the problem. Here, first one is an isentropic process, clearly described as an insulated contain uh, perfection uh, perfection cylinder uh, container, where there is a slow and reversible compression happening. That is the first process. The second process there is a heat rejection, so enthalpy, sorry, the entropy decreases because of the heat transfer out of the system. Okay, seventh problem. An insulated cylinder, as shown in the figure, is divided into two compartments, each of volume point zero two five meter cube. So let us say the left side is A. And uh, compartment B is the right side compartment. The left chamber is filled with air at 100 kilo pascals and 25 degrees centigrade. So we can note the volumes first. So V A one is 0.25 meter cube equal to V B one. Okay, now P A one equal to 100 kilo pascals and uh, T A one equal to twenty five degrees centigrade. Right chamber has water vapor. The left chamber is connected to a valve. So the left chamber is connected to a valve to a line in which air is flowing at a pressure of six hundred kilo pascals under twenty five degrees centigrade. The right chamber contains saturated water vapor. That means X B one equal to one. The valve is opened, allowing the air to flow 
from the air line to the left chamber until pressure reaches the line pressure that means p a 2 equal to 600 kilo pascals at this point the valve is closed once the pressure reaches 600 kilo pascals in a valve is closed for air r equal to 287 and gamma equal to 1.4 determine the mass of the air initially in the left chamber the mass of steam in the right chamber final temperature in each chamber and mass that enters in the left chamber due to the opening of the valve okay so this is the problem here so let us do this p uh, for air we can say p v equal to m into 287 into t t in kelvin so we can apply for the state one that is 100 kilo pascals so 100 into 10 power 3 pascals into volume is 0 0.025 equal to mass mass you have to find so i will say mass in a into 287 into temperature is 25 degrees that is 273 plus 25 so from this i can get the mass of the air in the chamber a initially so i will say ma1 because the mass is coming in also correct when the valve is open so it is ma1 that will be equal to Zero point zero two nine two kg. Okay, that is the initial mass in the chamber A. Okay, now for steam, what should be the pressure of the steam? The it is given as saturated water vapor. So what should be pressure of the steam? The piston is free to move. Okay, so insulated frictionless piston is free to move. So if the steam's pressure is different than the pressure of the air chamber, then the piston will not be in equilibrium. So that means P B1 should be equal to P A1 equal to 100 kilo pascals. So now we are looking for a state where the pressure is 100 kilo pascals and the quality is saturated vapor. Okay, so go to steam tables. From steam tables, you can get the values. So you will see that at 100 kilo pascals, V B1, the specific volume of the steam in the chamber B is equal to vg at 100 kilo pascals so that that is we can take from the tables so vb1 will be equal to 1.694 meter cube per kg this is the vg at 100 kilo pascals so now we can find the mass of the steam which is equal to vb divided by v b 1 which is equal to 0 0.025 this is a total volume meter cube and this will be meter cube per kg okay now that will be 0 0.025 divided by 1.694 which is equal to 0 0.01475 kg so we can easily see that for the piston see it is insulated friction less piston it is insulated so there may be no heat transfer basically the cylinder itself is insulated so for steam or air there will be not be any uh, heat transfer basically between air and steam also there will be no heat transfer that is fine but the pressure has to be same in both the chambers at the equilibrium point okay so for example if there is a pressure gradient okay from air's pressure is higher than steam pressure then the piston will move to the right or else it will move to the left. So, as the pressure is same, then only the piston will stay at a particular state that is equilibrium state where the properties are defined. So, in this case, 
specifically that is the concept we have used and uh, so this is nothing but what vg at 100 kilo pascals so from that i got the mass okay now what is the process happening in steam in the steam as the valve is open the air passes to the chamber a now this makes the pressure to increase in chamber a due to which the piston moves to the right as the piston moves to the right so this air comes in so the piston moves to the right the steam undergoes an compression it is slow process when the valve is slowly open slowly air enters and uh, the piston is frictionless that means there is nothing which will cause an irreversibility in the process so smooth transition of piston takes place as it goes from the initial point towards the right side compressing the steam so piston as it moves to the right it actually causes an adiabatic reversible compression for the steam okay so we can note that steam undergoes reversible that is due to the frictionless piston adiabatic compression okay so adiabatic because the cylinder itself is insulated and also the piston is insulated so due to which completely chamber b is adiabatic and uh, slow compression takes place with because of the frictionless uh, piston it is reversible also so the process is therefore isentropic that is s2 will be equal to s1 okay so again from steam tables s1 will be equal to sg at 100 kilo pascals so what is that that will be equal to 7.359 kilo joule per kg kelvin now this will be equal to s2 okay what is the final pressure final pressure for chamber a is 600 kilo pascals okay now as the air enters the chamber a slowly the piston goes towards the right once the pressure in the chamber a reaches 600 kilo pascals obviously the pressure in the steam chamber will also be 600 kilo pascals temperature may be different in both please understand that so pressure has to be the mechanical equilibrium is attained so we can say p2 will be equal to 600 kilo pascals okay now the state 2 for the steam is fixed for the steam state 2 is what p2 equal to 600 kilo pascals and s2 equal to 7.3 3.59 kilo joule per kg kelvin so now two properties are enough to fix the state correct so what is this state so first we will see that go to saturation tables and uh, see for 600 kilo pascals what is the value of sg so we find that sg at 600 kilo pascals is basically less than s2 so that means what s2 is already greater than sg so the state is the state 2 is superheated vapor so you have to go to superheated from superheated vapor 
table for 600 kilopascals. Okay, we know that for superheated uh, state, lot of tables are there corresponding to a given pressure. So go to the pressure corresponding to 600 kilopascals by interpolation. Now the second property is for the entropy being 7.359. So you can use this as the primary column and interpolate for other by interpolating we will get the other properties required properties ok. V S2 so T S2 is found as 296.5 degrees centigrade and uh, V S sorry V2 C2 and V2 V2 equal to 0 0.4312 meter cube per kg ok. So, we can find one of the properties U2 also you can find ok u2 also you can find so now this is the state to fix for this once the specific volume is known mass of the steam is known to me already so what is the final volume of the steam that is i will say v v2 what is the final volume of the chamber b that is uh, volume total volume of steam is equal to 0.4312 that is v2 into m s that is 0 0.01475 so which is equal to 0 0.00636 meter cube v b 2 ok now please see that initially v b 1 was 0 0.025 now compression has happened so volume is decreased to 0 0.00636 that means the volume of A will increase. So, we, we have this initial volume of A plus initial volume of B should be equal to initial final volume of A plus final volume of B because in the same term, total volume should be conserved. So, you know this this is 0 0.025 plus 0 0.025 equal to now V A 2 should be calculated from this equation. So, V B 2 we know the value. So, which implies V A 2 the total volume of A in the final stage is what? That will be 0 0.04364 meter cube. So, you can see that the volume has increased from 0 0.025 to 0 0.043. Okay. So, now state 2 for A is also fixed because you know volume pressure is 600 kilo is given. So, you know these two from that we can calculate the required values. Like for example, temperature if you want you can use the equation of state and calculate temperature. So, before that we will see what is happening for air that is a control volume there are two things happening basically here there is a mass transfer from the air line to the chamber A, but volume also is increasing for A. So, th this is a hybrid uh, control volume ok. In system mass remains constant there will be no mass transfer volume can change. In a control volume mass can come in or mass can go out, but volume will not change. In this particular case for A you will see both are changing that is mass is coming in. So, mass of the air initially was found to be 0 0.0292 kg. Now, it is increasing because of the incoming mass from the air line plus the volume also is changing. So, this is called an hybrid control volume in which both mass and volume changes. So, we have to write the equation for this. Uh, so, first we will finish the steam which is easier. First law is written as Q minus W equal to delta U obviously insulated and it is a isentropic process. So, Q is equal to 0. So, you can say minus W equal to delta U. Delta U is what? M into U2 minus U1. So, from the superheated tables U2 can be got as 2 
फाइव टू सेवन नाइन फाइव पॉइंट फोर किलो जूल पर के जी यू वन इज प्रीवियसली गॉट हियर फ्रॉम दिस इनिशियल स्टेट इट सेल्फ ओके हियर यस वी हैव सेड दैट दिस स्टेट इज फिक्स बेसिकली तो सम दैट यू वन विल बी इक्वल टू यू जी एट हंड्रेड किलो पास्कल्स Hundred kilo pascals. So from that we can get two five not six kilo joule per kg for U one. So you know both the values now. So I can say this is mass is zero point one sorry zero point zero one four seven five into U two two. This is by interpolation. Okay, two seven nine five point four minus U one is two. Five not six. So once you fix the state with two properties, other properties can be easily got. So this will be equal to four point two six eight kilojoules. So that means W equal to minus delta U equal to minus four point two six eight kilojoules. So the work involved. Work involved in compressing the steam is minus. That is what it's compression. So negative steam for the steam it is negative work. Four point two six eight kilojoules. Now what is I say work for steam specifically? So what is work for air? Which is compressing steam? Air is compressing steam. So this work. For the steam has come from the air chamber. Okay, so that means that is, I can write the only environment for the steam is air, or for the air is steam basically. So, uh, for in case of work transfer, so I can say W R equal to minus W S, which is equal to four point two six eight kilojoules. So the work involved in the steam, this is due to the volume change of the air. Correct. Okay? So that is in got it. We have got from the uh, applying the first law for the steam chamber. Okay. Now let us proceed and write the first law for air. For air, Q minus. Say let us uh, integrate this first. I will say a small amount of Q, small amount of delta W equal to. We can say. D E C V minus sorry plus mass which is going out into H E minus can like uh, for control volume we can write but Q is zero insulated so this also I can write as D M E mass which is a small amount of mass which is coming in into H E Minus sorry, going out into H minus a small amount of mass which is coming in D M I into H I. Okay, here obviously the kinetic energy and potential energy changes are neglected. That means this I can write as U C V. So I can write minus delta W equal to D U C V can be written as M C V U C V. Okay, this is also zero. There is nothing going out. Only something is coming in. So minus d m i into h i. Now mass conservation. Mass conservation d m c v by d t equal to m. So d t will not. The differentially will write. So d m c v equal to d m i minus d m e. So this is zero. So I can say D M I can be written as D M C V itself. So this is written as D M C V U C V minus instead of D M I I can put D M C V itself D M C V into H I. So now you have to see what is H I. H I is the enthalpy of the incoming air from the Airline. So, what is this? Airline has a fixed pressure and temperature. If you go back and see the diagram, six hundred 
kilo pascals 25 degrees centigrade so it has a enthalpy and uh, the constant property air flow takes place in the air line so the air which is coming in from the air line into the chamber will have the same enthalpy so i can say hi will be equal to h of the line do you understand so that is the thing here so now this is what the expression is how to do this now integrate this integrating we can say w minus w equal to this is the total work in, involved in this process is equal to m 2 u 2 minus m 1 u 1 understand that m 2 is the mass of the air at the final state and u 2 is the internal energy at the final state so the here for example take this when you want to integrate this from state 1 to state 2 dm dm cv u cv okay now this can be written as m cv u cv 1 to 2 which is equal to m2 u2 minus m1 u1 so that is what so first term second term hi is a constant because and this is constant because what the flow of air has a constant property when it flows to the air and that that uh, comes in so the line enthalpy will not change so the incoming enthalpy also will be constant so this need not be taken into account for the integral so i can say this minus h line into this if you integrate dmi it will be m2 minus m1 that's it correct so what is m2 m2 is the final mass in the chamber a so this will be the integrated equation so what is w here w is already got w equal to 4. Point 268 kilojoules correct 4.268 kilojoules because that is the work involved in compressing the steam and that is given by the a to b air chamber to the steam chamber okay now this can be written as 4268 joules so let us write this minus 4268 equal to m2 i don't know what is the final temperature of this that also i don't know basically please understand that u2 can be written as cv t2 u1 can be written as cv t1 t2 comma t1 in kelvin okay now cv itself can be calculated as what r by gamma minus 1 equal to 287 by 0.4 equal to 717.5 joule per kg kelvin okay similarly h line h line can be calculated as cp into t line t line in kelvin so now cp equal to what C, cp equal to gamma r by gamma minus 1 which is equal to 1004.5 joule per kg kelvin okay that's it so now h t line is what t line is Equal to twenty-five degree centigrade. Correct. Here twenty-five degree centigrade. So that will be equal to two ninety-eight kelvin. So now I don't know C T uh, one I know, but T two I don't know. Okay. So I have to write this. M two. M two is what. So we know that P two V two equal to M two or T two. so now i don't know t2 because here u2 will have cv t2 correct so now let us try to eliminate m2 here so which implies m2 will be equal to what p2 v2 divided by r t2 i know p2 p2 is 600 into 10 power 3 600 kilopascals into v2 is what v2 have calculated already that is 
the air chamber here VA2 is the V2 0 0.04634 4364 0 0.04364 divided by 287 into T2 okay now so now you can substitute this M1 I know U1 also I know so for M2 you substitute something in terms of T2 itself do you understand so I can write minus W equal to for M2 I can write this as 600 into 10 power 3 into 0 0.04364 divided by 287 into T2 into CV is 717.5 into T2 actually T2 cancels in the first term minus M1, M1 I know right what is M1 I have already done here from this 0 0.0292 kg 0 0.0292 into u1 u1 is 717.5 into t1 is what is t1 25 degrees centigrade that is 298 298 so this is the first term okay minus so this i know so t2 is cancelled so first two terms i can evaluate with the numbers second term h line h line is 1004.5 into 298 this is also known to me but here m2 again i can substitute this i will just for brief i will write v2 v2 by t or t2 okay minus m1 is 0 0.0292 so now t2 is the only unknown in this equation we have eliminated m2 in terms of t2 so i get so because w is known to me 4268 correct so I can eliminate, uh, uh, eliminate uh, M2 in terms of T2 and write calculate T2 itself as 378.25 Kelvin or 105.25 degrees centigrade. That is it. So, you can see in this problem that is a hybrid control volume, first of all. So, in the control volume where both mass is changing as well as the uh, volume is changing there is a displacement work which is involved so this work is not any other form of work in control volume basically we can write wx that is the work involved due to some other say for example turbine work compressor work okay shaft work electrical work anything but not displacement work because volume is not going to change but in this case since the volume is changing the displacement work comes into play so that displacement work was calculated for the steam chamber since the immediate neighbor of the or the only neighbor of the steam chamber is air chamber this work for the steam has to come from the air chamber so that is very important so the key here is calculating the work involved for the steam chamber and uh, equating that to the negative of the work involved for the air chamber. So, that is very key. So, in that way we have found the displacement work involved in the air chamber. Now, control volume equation is apply, applied here and uh, integrating the control volume uh, equation, we got two unknowns in the equation one is m2 and uh, u2 written in terms of t2 so m2 and t2 are the unknowns but equation of state is the second equation which we used to eliminate m2 or writing m2 in terms of t2 itself and uh, making this energy equation to have only one unknown t2 so once the t2 is evaluated we can solve the problem so this is what is asked so you can see the problem final temperature in each chamber and mass that enters mass that enters is very simple so once you know the final mass okay now t2 is known v2 is known so you can find the final mass okay that is it so m a2 sorry m a2 minus m a1 will be equal to 0 0.21208 kg Okay, because you know now volume is known, final volume A2, V A2 is known, 
PA2 is known that is 600 kilopascals that is known PA2 and now TA2 also is known this is TA2 basically correct. So all the three are known so M2 can be found MA2 can be found so once MA2 is found then MA1 uh, is already known so subtract these two you get the mass which has come in okay final mass is more than the initial mass. So this is a very interesting problem in which first one important thing what was identified is there is a slow compression due to frictionlessness of the piston this compression is uh, slow and it can be taken as adiabatic and reversible compression. So the process undergone by the steam is adiabatic reversible process which was taken as the isentropic process. So the second state for the steam was fixed as S2 equal to S1, one of the properties. But understanding that always there will be a mechanical equilibrium between air and the steam chamber, the pressure, final pressure of the air, which is given as 600 kilopascals, will be the pressure of the steam chamber as well. So, two properties we have got one is the entropy, another one is the pressure. And from these two properties, we have got the other properties like V2, U2, etc and applied the first law for the steam from which we got the work done which is nothing but minus of delta u and that work done on the steam will be done by the air so that we got so you can see clearly see that work done by the air is positive. So now applying the control volume energy equation for the air side and uh, recognizing that the work term involved here is the displacement work not the any other form of work substituting that work here we got the uh, temperature in the air column in the final state. From that we can find the mass, Okay, this is the solution.